This is Don Moretta. In 2004, he and a team of three others set out to run the Sunshine Coast Trail on the west coast of British Columbia, 180 kilometers of uncharted running territory. We're talking four marathons in 48 hours or more than four marathons distance-wise. From the science point of view, we're always kind of interested, you know, in what the physical body can actually do as well and how it responds. And there have been endurance contests where people have died. When you get above the marathon level into the ultra distance, you really start to tax, you know, the physical limits of probably what the body can handle. Dom's teammates are among Canada's top ultra-running athletes. The rest of the team includes Ian Jackson, Wade Repta, and David Cressman. Together, the four runners will take on the challenge to run the trail non-stop. The Sunshine Coast Trail starts at Sarah Point, which is accessed by water taxi and runs 180 kilometers to Sultry Bay, gaining and losing over 20,000 feet of elevation. This distance, four times the length of a marathon, will push the limits of what is physically possible for a runner. It may seem like a strange thing to do, but that's what Club Fadas is all about. Fadas is a, a term that's been around for a long time. It was uh, coined by a fellow named Joe Oakes, who is from California, and he needed a qualifying time in the, I think it was mid-70s, um, for Western States, a very famous long-distance run, 100-mile uh, run. And he couldn't find a qualifying race. Uh, there weren't that many around. And he decided to put on his own. He called it fat ass. And his thing around it was no wimps, no whining, no fee. And the fat ass was born. And Ian has been organizing the fat ass New Year's run in Vancouver for 10, 11, I think we're going into the 12th year this year. That event just morphed into Club Fat ass. <laughs> How long do you think that'll take to drive out, out there? I think maybe an hour or so. Yeah. We can take that big tree out. And that would, <laughs> that would take... <laughs> what a jive trip. <laughs> you gotta get serious, man. You must be hanging around with those fat ass guys too long. I wanna educate them a little. <laughs> they don't get it. They think that they're the only fanatics in town and they get to be fanatics. And... Being a logging community, uh, I became aware that uh, much of the old growth was disappearing. I thought that uh, it would be really good to uh, save some of the last remaining patches. You have to have the people of the community on side, especially living in a community that is very pro-logging, as Powell River is. And uh, so to... Uh, to achieve acceptance, we realized we had to get people to see what it is that we were hoping they would appreciate. And uh, the way to do that was to, uh, to build a trail linking uh, these areas of old growth. I hear them snipping. They, uh, they get obsessive. I don't know why. You've got to beat this thing up. Okay, it's almost like downtown. Another couple of cuts. And we're looking sharp. About 92 or 93, Eagle got, got me interested in building trails for some, I don't know how he did it. He tricked me into it and it got to be addictive. Like we had about 35 kilometers of trails, I think, in this system that were already built. And so the 180, that means we built about 145 new new kilometers. Remember that, Eagle? What's that? When we got our trail to 70 or 80, 81 clicks. At Fiddlehead? Yeah, at Fiddlehead, we had a... Yeah. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. We were above 77. Yeah. 
who didn't pay much attention to the fact that we were We did long. at the time. I used to say yeah. it all the time, and yeah. then after a while, it turned out it was two and a half times as long. We sort of forgot that one. Yeah. You know, after a while, we went, ah. West Coast Trail. That's a little trail. Yeah, little trail. Little trail. They should never even attempt running at night. They should, even if they went at night, I think it's insane to walk. They should just get rest. Overall, they're going to be sharper and fresher and fast as hell. Demands respect. Beautiful like that one day, and next, you got to haul your ass out of there. I've had a lot of friends that have done these, um, the West Coast Trail in uh, speed style. And I didn't want to just do that again, um, partly because I feel the trail is overused and overexposed. And, you know, the Sunshine Coast Trail is, is an opportunity for us to, you know, showcase uh, a trail that needs more attention because it is a beautiful trail and it really does have the potential to be a great. Um, hiking destination for for tourists from all over the world. And who's who are we going to have for Pacers, and get a blood pact on what's the deal? Are we going to treat it like the Tour de France, and we're going to have domestiques, and one or more people are going to get to the finish? Or are we going to do it as a team or die? This distance is going to be very challenging. The feeling of being part of a team—it's motivating. You can't measure how much it is to have somebody else there who to say, you know, come on, you can do it, or keep going, or, or just even to just validate, like, you know, I feel like shit too. You should feel like shit. You run for 130K, let's go. We can still do this. You know, no one person could pull this off right now until we establish um, the route a little bit better. And in a way, we're setting two standards. I think we're um, really laying the groundwork for what can be considered, you know, um, trail speed challenges, as well as we'll be the first to, to knock off the Sunshine Coast Trail. Go team! Come to an aid station, um, especially after a really long run like that. You're a little bit wonky, like you know, you're happy to be there, but you know, it's like you want to just get up and go. I, and I find like if I sit, beware the chair is my, is is the motto there or the the um, the thought because the, if you sit down, it's so easy to stay seated. I like to keep on going, just just keep on going, keep walking or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna start walking. Beware the chair, Dom. Up. Beware the chair. Again. And what we didn't see was all the chaos behind the scenes, because we were only there for five or ten minutes at each aid station, and we were extremely well cared for. Well, I, my car is packed full of everything that they would need, uh, from clothing to food to water, ice, um, just uh, all the energy uh, supplies that they need for to you know keep energized throughout the run and. Um, it's also good to see a familiar face <laughs> after a few hours of climbing and descending. And Paul and Laura are seasoned veterans at uh, this ultra running thing. They've, they've crewed for Dom and Wade many, many, many times. So I'm learning, picking up a few pointers here and there. I know how much trouble it is to 
to organize and coordinate and, and just, you know, even get people to the same place at the same time on those remote roads. Do you say you got signs up at that spot now? I do. Okay, and yes. I'm going to just mention that the boys are coming through and okay. maybe they'd want to walk up the trail yeah. and see them, you know. Hey, how'd you get here? How'd you guys get here? Hey! Coming together. I once did two marathons in one year and thought that was a lot. I mean, these guys are doing more than four in 48 hours. That just seems like a whole other level. I really haven't a clue whether it's going to be possible for them or not. I would think, you know, no matter how you slice it at any pace, it's going to be pretty challenging. bottom line with these kind of contests is there's a sheer number of calories you have to be taking in to be able to do them whether it's vegetarian or not now with Dom and his brother being vegan that's pretty much the more extreme sort of category of vegetarian if you're gonna do a, a particular performance calories basically translate into metabolism metabolism has to meet energy expenditure so if somebody's gonna run you know, eight minute miles, there's a certain energy expenditure they have to put into the body in order to be able to maintain that pace. If you don't, you're not going to be able to keep that pace up. The vegetarian calories tend to be a little bit lower on caloric density, which means a lot of times to meet large needs for calories, you may have to eat more. And a lot of times in these contests, it can be really tough um, to eat more. But I got to admit, I've heard of a lot of endurance athletes in these longer contests that can eat some pretty odd things. A lot of it comes down to, I think, just your tolerance for it as well. I mean, you'll get one person that would eat a hamburger and probably throw up five minutes later doing these kind of contests, and another person can eat just about anything, and it doesn't seem to make much difference to them. Yeah, I had a beer and a burger, and I was just as happy as pie. That beer tasted so good, because I kind of measured the course off in terms of beers, and, and that was the first beer. I couldn't have a beer or couldn't have a burger or anything substantial until you get to the shingle mill, and that's, like, that's a significant point you know that's like a that's a 50k point so that's in your mind that's a significant point living in vancouver it's it's easy to run year round on the trails and, and on the roads we're, we're very fortunate that way um, the hard part is the mental part of of maintaining that kind of a schedule uh, it's a depressing time to run because it's wet it's dark it's um, you've got limited hours and snowshoeing is really a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just a whole different atmosphere. So you sort of get rejuvenated both mentally, but then physically it adds a lot of um, strength conditioning that you don't get on trails or can't get on trails. And just a really high intensity workout, no matter how slow you're going, you sort of have to maintain this, this certain heart rate. You can't just really cruise through a snowshoe run. making her way back and Mr. Buff guy number 334 334 that's Steve Cressman what up buddy again off the front be bear aware I could care I like that you like that one Jackson seem to have lost my buddies but this is the right way right no they, they didn't come by did they no no I'm, I don't know they must have got lost that's odd. Oh, no. I don't know why. This is one of those little moments. Yeah, you can get this on film. <laughs> well, hey. Okay. And then, Some, something's there. coming there. Uh, no, it's not there. We, we, we never get too far apart. This is the farthest apart we've probably been. Get out. I didn't. I was just walking along the lake there. You, you turned. 
I didn't wait at a T junction, and that's kind of, you know, that's considered, um, you know, that's what you do. It was extremely well marked, but in any case, I took the right way. Wade went the wrong way. It's one of the only times in the whole day that it went the wrong way. So anyway, when the boys caught up to me, I got the devil. So uh, I spent the next four hours thinking how I was going to get even. So we were just trying to calculate uh, what our <laughs> kilometer pace is here. <laughs> really wanted to do is give some show time. They got lost. Figured they, somebody needed to be... Somebody needed to suffer for it, so I took the mental hit. Because I'm the toughest emotionally, I guess. Oh boy, that feels nice. Does that feel nice? It's oh, all I'm surprised you didn't come out of there with a fish in his mouth. Exactly. <laughs> okay, run, your swine dogs. Oh. We've, uh, we've said a few derogatory things about your trail here, Eagle. <laughs> It's yeah. private property, so we're happy to go along wherever they allow us. Growing up, forest fires uh, tend to be put out very quickly, but this one accelerated so quickly, just uh, took off. Fluid, I think, is a big one kind of thing because so many of the, the functions in the body depend on having a fairly normal level of hydration. And the one thing that we know is thirst is a really bad indicator um, of how hydrated you are. So if these guys just go by how thirsty they are, they're not going to get in even a fraction of what they probably need. With both the food and the fluid, they really have to almost be on a schedule of even if they don't want to eat or don't want to drink to be taking it in. Otherwise, you know, it may not bother them, you know, for the first part of the, the course, you know, even for the first, you know, half day, but it'll come back to haunt them probably in that, you know, last 12 hours versus the first 12 hours. Because most of the problems you find physiologically, they don't get better over time. Once you create them, um, usually they just get worse over time. What Wade's doing there is he's just having plain old salt. This is the same damn thing, except in tablet form. Uh, with fairly high sweat rates, they lose a lot of sodium. And what happens in hyponatremia is you, you couple the loss of sodium with taking in a lot of plain water. And what it can do is it can cause shifts in the fluid compartments in the body. Um, and at the minor level, it creates sort of dizziness, kind of like an intoxication. But it has led to convulsions as well and those kind of problems. So this is where this whole thing starts, up till now, it's all prolonged. From here we got two mountains and one bitch of a climb coming up right ahead of us right now too. Next hill is Confederation, 600 meter climb, well 500 meter climb from here. Confederation, it's a very steep mountain, it goes straight up and Dave, I gotta tell you, Dave just took off on that section. He just hammered it. Um, and we're all saying, like, what's going on here? And Wade and I were sitting back saying, OK, well, whatever. Like, go and blow your brains out. But there's no point to this. <laughs> Dave's ripping it up. Just being a good domestique. Later, working it. Jackson, keep it real. He was still running, but you could see he was kind of, whoa. He was kind of losing his equilibrium. And you could tell he was running out of gas. And uh, unfortunately, when we got to the bottom there, uh, Dave, uh, he, he abandoned the race there. Um, I'm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sore. <laughs> got around the lake and we started the descent and it's got bad dizzy spells, so we sat down. When we were coming down the mountain, I knew Dave was done, but I said, okay, Dave, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to create a little bit of drama for the boys. So uh, 
hang over my shoulder and I'm going to bring you in as if you're the wounded warrior here, like totally toasted. So I, you know, put my arm over Ian and, you know, sort of rolled my eyes up and up in my head and was like just looking like death warmed over. And Dave was going, oh, like this and moaning and groaning and I, and I cut into those guys. You guys, what the hell do you think you're doing taking off on us like this? Dave almost died up there. What were you thinking? Leaving us, you know, Jesus, Dave was close to death. You can see their faces going, <laughs> Dave, are you okay? And I just smile at Wade. <laughs> it was good. Anyway, uh, I got even. Uh, but that that was it for Dave. It's an incredible trail. It's an incredible adventure. It's a hell of a, you know, it was a hell of a lot of fun with everybody. But it's not it's not a run. It's just walking. Then we got onto the trail again, and uh, it was bushwhacking for a long, long time. Um, there will be stretches where we don't know where they're at for about four or five hours. You know, from inland lake to. Um, to Spring Lake, approximately, in that vicinity. And that could be a five-hour stretch where we don't know how they're doing, and it's getting nighttime. So that'll be the hardest part. Don likes to go fast, and we weren't going fast. I mean, we couldn't go fast. It wasn't a, it wasn't like a Western States-type race or, a, or a, a race race where everybody's running all the time. It's slogging and stuff. And uh, right in about there, Dom started to have some grief. Uh, we had to sit down and have a little trail talk, and you know, it was either you sit there and die, or you go back and find nobody. You got to go forward because that's where your loved ones are, and that's where aid is, and that's where you're going to get taken care of. So it, it took a little bit of deep digging for, for Dahmer to, um, you know, to get it in his mind that we had to go forward. I think the worst part is is yet to come the sun is going to set and the ridge that they have to cross is is pretty serious um i think they might have to rope in so that's going to be the challenging part uh, or hopefully exciting for them because i know that that a challenge is exactly why they're here so when i see them sick if i see them that's really hard yeah when you see them suffering and sick and uh, that's that's a really tough thing to do they made up uh, a whole hour coming from Inland Lake to Fiddlehead, which is a blistering pace, and they left on time as advertised, and so they could be here in another half hour to uh, two hour, and if they do, uh, then they're maintaining a pace that they need to maintain to, yes. to finish it, you know. Who are the Whistler boys? Well, the Whistler boys are uh, uh, two young guys. Gary Robbins and Mark Fearman. When it came to picking pacers um, or people to accompany us through the night, uh, they were uh, they were right on it. Like just the opportunity to come out and go out and do something in the woods with these yahoos, they they were just all over it. Because I think I'm probably going to head up soon, meet these guys at the top uh, to come back down with them. They've been running for 16 hours, 17 hours now. 17 hours, so they're getting pretty tired. Uh, they just need a set of eyes and a fresh, uh, fresh mind to take them through the night. Uh, I've gone ahead on the next section of trail and just had a look at it in the daylight, uh, flagged off some extra sections so I don't get lost throughout the evening. And then a buddy of mine, Mark Fearman, is halfway down. We're going to catch up with him hopefully about 1.30 in the morning and tag out so that he can be the fresh eyes at that point on. Uh, once the sun comes up, they're going to be fine. Uh, so they just want someone, basically, they want to shut their minds down and just follow someone throughout the evening because they've been going forever. Smith Range in the night, there's cliffs that are two and a half thousand feet drops. Uh, sheer drops. Uh, they might bounce once on a ledge. Hey guys. All right, bud. You know what? You're fine. Yeah, you look good. I feel fine, but uh, I know that I can do it with the reality of this. Still from here, I'm positive. 
Dom was done. Uh, he was done in his mind more than his body, I, I, I think, because I think he could have gone farther. And Wade absolutely could have gone farther, and I think it was just easier for him to say bugger it than continue. Logistics, logistics of this are getting me. What do you mean by that? I just, I feel fine. You're but right. I, there's no You're way right, Eagle. I, there's no way I could do another 30 hours of this. There's no way. You're getting into the tough part now. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> that was not much of a pep talk. <laughs> But I, I think I can finish. Mm -hmm. Jack's not getting down until t Monday morning, guaranteed. If he's he's got like 85 left, 80 left. Yeah, he's gonna knock off 30 before by by seven in the morning. He's gonna knock off 10 oh, by seven in the morning. I just I just hear that. <laughs> All right, I think he's gonna do two k an hour. This is your your delicacy, isn't it? That's right. Uh, I think we'll get through faster than that. Eagle, what do you think? Today? If the moonlight is favorable, uh, you could be uh, doing two. All right. I don't see how you can carry okay, enough water. Okay, we, we get lost. Run and get lost, or hike and uh, find the way. Really it boils down to that. Eagle came up with the idea. Well, uh, this is a gnarly bit of trail coming up here. It's, it's there's some challenges with some all-terrain vehicles having torn up the trail. And he said, "Well, bugger it. Why don't I just walk you down the trail, or take you down the next section of trail, to where um, Mark was." You guys go the regular long way, if you imagine a bow, right. and having a saw blade across the bottom. Yep. I'm going to go in on Alaska Pine, the saw blade. Okay. You guys are going to do the trail, March Lake Trail. Right. Okay. And you'll be uh, running a whole lot more than I am. And uh, so I think uh, I can uh, help you up to Elk Lake. If I can do that, mm -hmm. uh, you got her licked. One person non-stop was right. a goal. Yeah. We set the record, and I'm doing it for you guys. We love you, man. And for everybody else who's come along and pushed us on and helped us out. Um, it's a team effort, right? The story yeah. is just starting you here. Jackson, the glory's all yours. Well, yeah, no drama, really. It was all, you know, hugs and see you on down the trail. Nothing surprising about the, the eventual time. It's like that's that was the plan, right? And it'll be once the sun comes out, I'll be just fine again. But right now, I, I you get wonky and just a few little bit. Yeah, nice snakes there. Yeah. I love snakes. You know, uh, some people say, do you hallucinate uh, after all that time? And one spot where there's these two massive old growth stumps. They're huge, huge old growth stumps. And uh, I guess in the olden days, they took chops uh, out of the stump and put uh, big logs in so they could get the Swedes on, go like this. So there's these two massive stumps right next to one another with these faces on them that look like Easter Island uh, statues. And they're magical. Just, you know, and you kind of see them with your headlamp in the dark. And it's like, wow, it's like, it's like a Disney movie or something. So, was I hallucinating? No, but it was almost it was almost like uh, Fantasia on acid to to see those things in there. You had a lot? Not right now. No. Uh, no. Yes. Oh, an iced tea. I, I iced tea. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Give me iced tea. Get There's a saying: Beware the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I'll take every opportunity to slack off I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're on the Elk Highway here. Are we? Yeah. 
Ready for a swim? Uh, we, yeah, swim sounds great. Ready for bed. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Most people can't believe you can run a regular marathon. So when these guys finish them, they're they're in such good shape. I mean, you can't never predict whether they're going to get sick or pull a muscle or whatever. But when those things don't happen and they they still can or even recover, like you know, just like that, just like Dave's recovered so well, so quickly, it's a testimony to what good shape they're in. You know, amazing what a little bit of sleep will do. I feel. Better than I have after any other 20-hour run I've done, that's for sure. You so you feel like you've accomplished something even though you didn't get the whole way? <clears throat> yeah. You know, we said from the beginning we do this as a team, and our goal is to get one person to the end, and right now we're still on target for our goal. So, as we said, not one person could have done this from start to finish, and it took four of us to get someone that far. So we're just pulling for Ian. He's, he's going to finish. Would you bet that he'd be the one to get this far? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's the only one stupid enough to even want to go this far. <laughs> you know, we're stupid, but then we become realistic. He just uh, doesn't become realistic. Yeah. So who's still got a bit of a mountain to do? Yeah, he's got a long climb. 42 yeah, feet. It's going to be a killer. stuck in the woods for god knows how long you know when we got there <laughs> found him we're hooping and you know, hear a hoop back yeah he's alive and he's still there well it turns out you know there he is with his t-shirt on and his shorts on and kind of smiling hey guys love you glad to see you Look, under there. a tree the whole night <laughs> <laughs> just you didn't have a sleep he's no. alive every no, two seconds <laughs> he froze to death and yet he was still full of piss and vinegar and ready to go and that's the Whistler boys. They were so helpful and so enthusiastic. They got us through a difficult section. God knows how long that section was. I think it was like 36K or something like that, where we didn't have any other access. <laughs> that's what I think it is. I hope that's not a wolf. Yeah, exactly. He's <laughs> learned how to speak English. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're part of the family immediately after that. The decathlon, what they used to say, is day one's for the boys and day two's for the men. Right? <laughs> And you can get through the first day, but by God, the second day is the one that kills you because it's technically tougher and ornery, and you're tired and you're beat up, and you know. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yeah. And that's the hard part. What do you guys think he's just now? I have no clue. I mean, I think he's he's mad, you know, and he's I'm mad enough to do it. it. He's yes. mad enough to do it. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. He's going to give me a sore, but I bet you he's going to. I have wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, but you know, at the same time. Yeah, this is about the three-quarter mark, and, and even doing three-quarters of it sounds like, you know, hey, what's a big deal? But hey, three-quarters of it, we, we did it in nine days, you know, 20 clicks a day, and we thought that was pretty good, you know, no big deal. We're not runners, and we don't care to be, but two days, holy <laughs> By that time, we were a machine, and uh, Gary had learned a whole lot, too, about what this trail running stuff's all about, because you know, all things considered, he, he hadn't had that much experience. So we had some ups and we had some downs. He pulled me through the whole thing, and it was a very sad moment, I have to say, when Gary had to go and uh, Wade picked up, he picked up to the time. 16 hours, have you ever run that long? Not even close. <laughs> taking some mass, taking some And aim. we've got a navigator along this time. Excellent. None of us are ready to keep definite going. Definite learning experience. <laughs> yeah, good. A definite learning experience. Yeah. It's a strange place I live in right now in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> We're a team, and it was nice to see Wade again. Just to have Wade back, to see he's in good shape and all that, and, and to have him with me was just really, really nice. We're 154 in. So 17K, 17 crest straight up? Yeah. No, no, apparently it's a really nice graded climb. Right on.
learned that Eagle had uh, uh, made the trail the way he made it to try and incorporate as many of these remaining old grove, old growth groves. This is what they used to refer to as the jungles at the turn of the uh, 20th century, and like 1910s or even earlier, when the people, the hand loggers, were uh, making an impact on this area, a thousand feet up from the water. That sort of, they left their impact on that rim. But we went through a couple of old growth groves that were uh, flagged and numbered, which really is bad news because that means uh, probably the next time somebody goes through there or in the not too distant future, they won't be there anymore. And that's a tragedy. And in the afternoon, I was thinking, okay, it's now over the 30, the predicted 36 hours. Something has gone wrong. Um, they're not, I, I knew they're not in, otherwise I would have gotten a phone call. Namely, a way to keep us busy while we wait, but to also to honor our, our friend who's pushing on as we could not. And uh, worst case scenario, nice little memorial. <laughs> oh, mighty Ian. You're not oh, bring mighty Ian. Ian. We bring you forth to us <laughs> from the forest above. phone rang a few times that afternoon of people asking how he's doing and I always ran to the phone thinking it was him so when the phone rang and he told me that he's still running it's like okay and how far how long <laughs> and he told me 11k yeah, I am near death. I am. Yeah, but that's why I'm going to get this. You don't know the trail. Yeah, it's in the middle. Because I told him, well, you can walk it. Um, 11k, you can walk it. You can do it. <laughs> she said I could walk. <laughs> Cheers. And then when I hung up, I was like, okay, is he walking or is he running? Is he limping? Is he crawling? What is he doing? How fast is he moving? This is legendary Canadian ultra running history. Yeah, Al Howard, we're, we're, we're thinking this. <laughs> I think it's phenomenal. Kid deserves a medal. Thank you. Outgoing, enthusiastic, energetic. His license plate is excess energy. And I always, when people figure it out, I always said, it's my husband's excess energy, it's not mine. <laughs> no, I, I, I. Have you I ever just, seen a psychologist for your problems, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first it's time part. I've ever seen him hesitate to answer something. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't sure of the question. No, I've never I, been I've asked that been question been before. The, I've been to the medical guy there, and I've actually oh. done the UBC. Uh, I was a guinea pig up there. Let's get ready. Do it, do it, that's all there is to it. Most of the guys in these kind of contests just seem to gravitate to doing it. But certainly, you know, to be able to go, when you're going 24 hours a day and you know you're not going to be stopping, I mean, there's some mental challenges. It's a certain personality that they have that's probably geared to this. And it was getting darker and darker. And when you get into the woods there, on some of these sections of the road, you had to turn your headlamp on. And we started to run, and we ran. We ran as fast as I have run in years on a trail, like full on crazy, just flying down these trails because they were nice and they were runnable. 
<laughs> you know, have a nice dinner and go out to meet some friends, see a movie. And fucking Jackson, he'd be out there running all night. What a fucking goofus. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. I don't know, 100 and probably 103 or 104 miles into it. I did not want to run in the dark by that time. My equilibrium was gone. It was shot. Somebody said, that's it, that's it, that's the finish. And I could see all these cars with their lights on. I thought, holy smokes, this is it. There it is, man, the tape. Woo! The tape. Oh, yeah. Woo! Nice, nice, nice. Nice. nice boys. <laughs> nice work, boys. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that'd go, guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 just remember sitting there and thinking it's over it's done that's it i, I can maybe go to sleep <laughs> and we just uh, flew down that whole section yeah. just doo -doo -doo -doo. it was that was pretty uh, high testosterone i gotta that say was i was, just, I was I worried at any second now this is all, <laughs> somebody's gonna get hurt yeah, you need i got a barley sandwich here. <laughs> uh but it was certainly a team effort the whole way and that was special. That was that was special, and that was very different from most of the other things I've ever done. It's unbelievable. Yeah. That's for sure. It's one of that's definitely one of the uh, greatest ultra running feats. I don't know, probably ever. I don't know, maybe ever in the world, but definitely Canada. That's uh, unbelievable. It's a long time. 43 hours, 50 minutes. That's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time to be running. That's all there is to it. You did a great job. It's been super being with all of you here, being part of the team. This is tops in my book now. I, I can't think of a harder trail, and for someone to gut it out, uh, to me, is inspiring and amazing, and I have a lot to learn about running, that's for sure. So it's, uh, he's a motivator for all of us now, and you know, I think he's set a standard in Canada that he's probably one of the best runners that you know, we'll see and have seen in a long time. I like the idea of doing things a little bit different and being the first one to do it. That's my challenge. That's our challenge as this particular team. So we done done it. 